Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. And we're actually going to be reacting to a video that I've just been made aware of. You see, being the QuickBooks chap and having amazing support like you guys over there, I'm getting a few messages and WhatsApp groups panging off about a video that was released just yesterday, QuickBooks versus Zero. Or sorry, Zero versus QuickBooks. And I think the fact that there's a zero in the front kind of defined what's going to happen here. Now, this video is by a fellow creator called Jerry Williams of Smooth Accounting. Um, I know her from LinkedIn. I commented on a few of her videos. I've been in some of her live chats. So I'm fully aware of what she does. And she's very zero based accounting practice and has a lot of knowledge in the world of zero. So it's interesting that now we've got a zero versus QuickBooks. Now, the reason I'm even bothered about this and I haven't seen the video just yet is that according to a few messages I've had there's a few inaccuracies in here so I thought it'd be only right as the QuickBooks chap to set the record straight and put any potential issues or potential miscommunication in there so that you're all on board with the right information so sit back relax and let's have a look at this video as we try and find out what's better zero or QuickBooks I know which one I'll choose. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, a certified UK trainer for Intuit QuickBooks, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now, in today's video, we're going to be reviewing a video that, as of today of recording, was released yesterday. So this is quick fire reactions, first time reactions for me. Wonder if it's first time reactions to you? Let me know below. And we're going to be talking about what the zero versus QuickBooks arguments are and if they hold merit in my opinion compared to what they are. So let's first of all have a look and see what video we are talking about. As you can see here, we've got the thumbnail. So this should give you some indication of what to expect from this video. We've got zero QuickBooks, zero versus QuickBooks and a really clean image actually compared to my thumbnails i'm actually really impressed with this one um i think other than on the boffix channel where lizzie does them and she's absolutely killing it i've definitely got a lot to learn on how to make those thumbnails that a little bit more um, impressive so this should set the scene exactly what to expect so let's jump in here this video okay, has been sponsored by one of my apps and let's start again this video has been sponsored by one of my absolute fave software providers go proposal if you're in a okay First of all, very, very impressed that she's managed to get herself go proposal. And you can see in the background there, we've got James Ashford's book there. I think I've got one up there somewhere as well. Love go proposal. Um, but I may not be sponsored by these people, but a big shout out to accounting manager. I mean, if they want to sponsor me, that's great. Um, but I, I absolutely love accounting manager. And I think accounting manager and go proposal are starting to go on their own little kind of path of which one you're going to choose um, and it'll be really interesting to find out which one of those two solutions um, is going to be the best going forward. If there's one piece of software in the world that's made my practice run more efficiently and more smoothly, these guys get the vote every single time. Their solutions at the moment and their innovations and the way that they've now got that back in by Bright means that actually they're kind of uh, the best out of the bunch. We did a video on them over on the Buffett channel the other day talking about how their new confirmation statement solution is an absolute game changer. So highly recommend going to watch that video. But back to the video. Back to the video. Now, before we go any further, I have to also point out that that set is looking amazing. So if you kind of go back to some of Jerry's previous videos and how they were, you can see that involvement going through. And I really like this. I like the fact that similar to what we've got, kind of got that blurred background, that bokeh effect. Um, got the smooth accounting in there as well. That's something that I definitely need to start doing better at and promoting my own stuff. But I think the subtle lights on the left hand side and everything that's going on there, the nice plant. I assume that's a zero duck there from memory. Um, don't quote me on that one. And then obviously she got an awards and, and everything else to get really clean background. And when you can kind of compare it to mine, yeah, again, kind of probably need to uh, up the game a little bit on that one. I'm going to be comparing Zero and QuickBooks and seeing which one is the best for cloud accounting software. It's Zero, by the way, but humor me and let's go through. All At least right from the beginning, she's explaining that this is a little bit tongue in cheek in places. 
uh, there's going to be some bias towards zero, which is absolutely fine. We just said that from day one. Um, and let's be honest, if it was the way around, bias would probably be towards QuickBox as well. So, cool. All the comparisons anyway. I'm sure you will have heard of Xero and QuickBooks Online. They are two of the most popular accounting solutions for small businesses. I'm also sure that you all know that I am Xero's number one fan. And if you don't, where have you been the last four years? Still waiting for Xero to sponsor my YouTube channel. If you think they should, please like and comment on this video. I must say as well, and I'm pretty sure I've seen this from kind of previous videos and previous content she's done, um, but she outsources her, her, her video content, which is completely the right thing to do, by the way. But whoever she's outsourcing it to are doing a stellar job, or even if it's internal employee that's doing it. But whoever it is, they are really starting to up their game in terms of production values on these videos. So, well done. Yeah, help a girl out. So, which platform is right for your business? I'm gonna get to it. But first, a quick summary. My firm moved to using Xero in May 2018, and we have never looked back. We are a zero only practice, and every single member of the accounts team are zero certified advisors. And that's really important. I mean, we are QuickBooks primarily. We do have a couple of zero clients and a couple of free agent clients and a couple of the other ones. It's not perfect that we have those um, those split, but sometimes you've got to put your clients first in terms of what software is right for them. I have a couple of my employees who still have a zero qualification in the background, but you know, I think it's it's right to kind of put your stake in the ground as to which one it is. And we've had many an argument between the industry of should you cater for all of the accountancy softwares out there, or should you be really looking at making sure that you know you focus on the ones that you're good at. So yeah, makes a lot of sense. It's a requirement of the job. No zero, no likey. We were also shortlisted as a finalist for zero small practice of the year in 2020. We didn't win. It's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old Again, friend. production is awesome. Let's be clear, I'm looking at QuickBooks Online here, not their desktop version. Ugh. Aesthetically. Now, I appreciate that this is a really personal choice thing, but I think that Xero's interface is so much nicer to look at. It's cleaner and therefore just so much easier to use. The okay, so I think what she's saying here, and let's bring up the old quickie books itself. Okay, so what I believe she's mentioning here is the fact that from an accountant's point of view, I hear this argument all the time. And I think, especially if you're from a Sage Line 50 background, I completely get it from what we are used to as accountants, what we want to see, what our perception of good quality and robust software can be. Then yeah, I think Zero does have a probably cleaner interface for our needs. But my argument would always be that, and this is why I personally like QuickBooks, and again, own personal opinion, what I think, and I'm thinking justified of saying, is that the software itself is very much catered towards the end user. So if you are a client using both QuickBooks and Xero, then my opinion is that you will definitely have a better understanding of what happens within QuickBooks, especially now we've got this option to move between an accountant view, as shown here, and then we can go back to our business view. Accountant view, very much, very methodical in what we've got to do. And the business view is very much this button does what it says. Get paid and pay. Customer and leads. Payroll. Bookkeeping. Very, very, very simple to understand. And I think the fact that there's this new button at the top here means that as soon as you need to create a new transaction of any point, it's very obvious that you press that button and off to the races. That's why I personally would say QuickBooks has by far the stronger UI user interface for the end consumer. As an accountant, completely agree. Even sometimes I can pull my hair out going, um, how do we supposed to get to access to XYZ? So yeah, I think um, from a purely customer point of view, QuickBooks definitely has a better UI. QuickBooks one just looks more complicated for me. Okay, let's move on to actual facts and not opinions. Pricing. Zero is slightly more expensive than QuickBooks. See the table on the next slide for the pricing of each software.
I will say though, that with the pricing table, we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here. There are a few differences on the prices, one of which is that Zero restricts the number of invoices and quotes to 20 and five bills on its starter plan, whereas QuickBooks offer unlimited. On the flip side, QuickBooks restricts the number of users on each plan, whereas Zero don't. I think it's much more useful to have unlimited users so that as your business grows, you don't have to keep paying more and more. Now, technically, she's not wrong there. If you buy directly from QuickBooks, then yes, you are restricted to users. But if you buy from people like myself and you go to our e-store and get yourself a discounted version of QuickBooks, who wouldn't want discounted version of the best software on the planet? Then head over to our e-store. Not only do we offer you that discount, but also we offer you unlimited users with that as well. But basically, if you come through someone like us, you're going to get yourself unlimited users, which negates that argument there. But I would say the argument of unlimited users doesn't quite fit true in my opinion. Like, I think one of the biggest failings of Zero, and again, I like Zero, I like it as a software, but I think one of the biggest failings is that that first tier. That first tier is almost completely useless to majority of the clients out there. If I was to look at my client's base now, there would be very few that I would be able to put on that lowest tier. What was it 20 invoices, five bills, something along those lines? Or, or maybe the way around, sorry, maybe it's five, bill, five invoices, 20 bills. Either way, it doesn't matter how many users I have on there. If they can only post that amount of transactions, that's not going to be useful for them. And to be fair, the whole point of the first tier is for your one-man bands. It's designed to be there and it's designed to have that opportunity to be able to start your business off and then move on from from there on in as you need it and i just always felt that that first tier of zero is just not useful at all yes it's almost like a trial maybe that you can trial it um and i know that the contractors out there they may have contracts out there who can utilize that um but even i would come come down to my contract especially with IR35 coming in now um, realistically, if they're in that sort of contract only element, they're only sending the five or 20 invoices, whatever the number was. I think that's really, really restrictive. So, yeah, I would personally argue that the QuickBooks method of at least having a solution that you can fully utilize at the lower bracket just restricts you to people as if and if you go through QuickBooks and don't go through us, then yeah, that's a, that's a fair criticism on that one. What I would also throw into the mix here is, and it's a bit of an elephant in the room, is QuickBooks self-employed is also there. That wasn't taken into consideration. That's kind of year of its tier. Even further down, not the best software in the world, I'm going to be completely honest, but at least it's a solution that can kind of cater for the smallest of small gig mentality type businesses out there. So there is that as an option. So yeah, so yeah I can, you know, for me personally, I don't think it's fair saying that the user limitation is a problem. I think if anything, I would take the user limitation, especially when you can just come to someone like us and get it re restricted anyway, um, over the fact that you're actually being restricted on how many transactions you can use. And I've always found that transaction mentality really odd. Which is the next difference that I want to discuss. Zero gives you unlimited users on all of its packages. QuickBooks Online restricts you to up to five users, even on its plus package, which is normally £32 per month. Both software options charge you extra for payroll, but Zero charges extra for CIS returns, which QuickBooks doesn't. Let's talk fixed assets. You know, those things that you buy that go to the balance sheet and not the profit and loss. Stay with me. In Xero, you can create a fixed asset register and it will accurately calculate and post depreciation for you each month. This means your accounts are more accurate and comparable to the ones that your accountant produces. It also means that you can keep all of your assets in one place. This is not a feature that QuickBooks has. Very, very fair. And in fact, let's be honest, like it's been a criticism of QuickBooks for, for a while now. The only solution that I would recommend is using friends at NetTracker, um, they work with Zero as well, and Sage, they work with all of them, um, and that's the only really way you could actually get around that. The only other thing I'd say though is that one of the reasons we moved one of our clients over to Zero was because of the fixed asset register, and actually it's become an absolute nightmare. I think the fixed asset register, in principle for smaller clients who just need something robust and simple to use, I get it, it works well. But anyone that's kind of relying on a fixed asset and, you know, is one of the feature lists that they're looking for, personally, I felt that it was 
lacking in that respect. Um, the amount of times I've had reconciliation differences between the register and what's on zero itself and had to go through and solve them and problematics and, and everything like that. You know, sometimes I wish I just had a a more robust solution that I could heavily rely on, like NetTracker, <laughs> and that <laughs> and that would actually uh, solve my issue. So fair play and the fact that it's completely free of charge and it works seamlessly all power to zero on that one zero gives you a basic inventory management system for free which although isn't massively intuitive it's absolutely fine for small businesses quickbooks will charge you an additional fee which increases depending on which plan you're on next you can restrict access that's fair yeah, I mean, there's no really argument to that. I would say personally that anyone who needs stock management, they will already be on the higher versions because Simple Start is designed for the simple, smaller businesses. That's why it's not there. And yeah, you can argue till you're blue in the face if that's right or wrong, but I think that's that's the reason that it's there. Um, but I would say on all of these though, like, again, it's about what your business needs. A lot of our businesses they would outgrow, the, if they have a requirement for stock management in that sort of sense, they would outgrow QuickBooks in a quick and zero in a very, very short amount of time. That's where QuickBooks Commerce, which is kind of their next version, their next tier, Jerry didn't mention on here, but QuickBooks Commerce is the stellar, the absolute stock management king. Um, does everything from not only stock management, but also gives you a chance to reorder new stock and, yeah. and lets you actually sell to multiple channels like eBay and Amazon and all those sort of things directly in the software. Absolute stellar piece of software. And one of those ones actually kind of changes the game for a lot of people. And yes, it's a commitment to kind of go in there and, and go through that, but it is actually an, a massive, massive plus. And I think that's where the next stage of stock management is. Personally, for a lot of my clients out there, they just need an end of stock figure. That's kind of where we, we would utilize it for. Anything more complicated than that or anything more needed that, that's when we need to have a conversation about, well, can QuickBooks fulfill your needs or zero in this case, or do we need to go on more specialized software? So yeah, and QuickBooks Commerce, absolute stellar in a more detailed way with Zero than you can with QuickBooks. For example, if you wanted to stop a user seeing banks or invoices, you can. And finally, Zero in- Yeah, agreed, completely agreed. And um, that's where QuickBooks Advance is gonna be useful for us. Um, it's not here in the UK just yet, but it's already out in the US and will be coming to the UK very, very soon from what I can tell. And that will solve these issues with the restrictions. Well, one thing I would definitely say is when it comes to user permission, Zero has that sweet spot in my opinion. QuickBooks possibly a little bit lacking unless you go to QuickBooks Advance. Zero absolute sweet spot, but the worst of all of them, if you've ever tried it, is Free Agent. When from memory they have nine different user credentials, which yes, is good for kind of having that granularity and, and understanding, but for most users it's just too complicated and realistically what you just need is a tick list of what you can and can't see going forward integrates with many more apps than QuickBooks does as a digital practice. And also what I failed to say here was the fact that from an accountant's point of view, the user experience or adding a user is very, very, very limiting. So the way that it works on Xero is to add a accountant, you need to go to individual clients and add those individual accountants. Whereas QuickBooks, you can do it all from the QuickBooks A, the QuickBooks accountant dashboard. And to me, that's the most important bit. I need to be able to quickly make sure that my team members have the right access to the right client and be able to go in there and be able to do what they need to do. Zero doesn't give you that option. You have to go through on an individual basis, which to me is quite restrictive in terms of being able to get the right people on the right clients. And finally, Zero integrates with many more apps than QuickBooks does. As a digital practice, this is really important to us as we rarely use Zero in isolation with our clients. There's usually always something extra that we add to streamline a client's finance function. Ultimately, there are pros and cons to both options. Hmm. So if I go to www.apps and I have a look at the apps available, I can't personally say that that is restrictive. If anything, there are too many apps these days. Um, and I think, you know, finding the apps that are the most important to you is really, really, really 
critical and having so many apps to go through does make it a little bit tricky shout out to NetTracker up there I think what Jane may be mentioning here is about the disconnect between some of the more popular apps like Square um, at the moment QuickBooks has a partnership with Zettle so the Zettle interface if you're using point of sale is absolutely stellar and stronger than the zero one at this point in time whereas Square has a much better interface with zero than it does with QuickBooks in the UK market. Now, again, if we look at the US market, US have just released what's called the Enhanced App Connections. And one of those is Square and eBay and there's other connections as well. And when you look at that, then that blows everything out of the water in terms of connectivity and what actually happens. It brings the transactions in on a more granular level um, and has a much enhanced, much more enhanced API offering. So I think really like, Yes, I completely agree. The importance of the app ecosystem being there. There is definitely at the moment some disconnect between Zero and QuickBooks in terms of vendors will prefer to connect with one than the other. And we've even got a position at the moment where Zero does offer some deeper integrations in certain situations. So our friends over at Cresco, for example, they are much, much, much better um, equipped to be able to connect with the Zero interface and be able to offer you the opportunity to take payments via Cresco through Zero than they are with QuickBooks because QuickBooks is slightly restrictive in their API. But that is something that is you know ongoing and is something that I, I imagine won't be a problem forever. I also think there is the problem at the moment of being able to make sure that we understand what is important when it comes to the app ecosystem and connecting them. And I think really having www.apps.com as the main way of being able to connect to um, the apps within QuickBooks is actually really, really important. And while we're talking about the world of apps as well, it's not just about the fact that there are you know, a lot of apps for both the Zero platform and for QuickBooks. I think both of them have some stellar connections. The fact that OneSAS got acquired by QuickBooks, I think is a big point. That means now that OneSAS is the, the best way to connect your Amazon, your eBay, PayPal, and all that sort of connections there. The fact that QuickBooks went out the book QB Commerce, which is previously Trade Gecko, is a big statement as well. And I think that's where the importance of apps and how apps are going to kind of continue going forward. Um, and what's the importance of that's going to be. Also, it's really important to note as well that there are certain functionalities within QuickBooks, like, for example, mileage tracking and being able to do OCR technology, so be able to take photos of your receipts and bring that in. That is all baked directly in the QuickBooks app, where Zero is reliant on having third-party solutions to be able to do that. And I think that, to me, is a, a massive plus for the QuickBooks. That's, that's my whole point where... QuickBooks is built from the ground up to support the end consumer for the business side of things. Whereas, realistically, if you think about Zero's point of view, they are very much looking at the accountant side first and they're building a lot of functionality for the accountants. I think if I'm honest, that shows by when it comes to what the actual user experience is. And for me, if I had a client who is very Sage Line 50 orientated, that's what they used and that's how they've kind of grown and they've had that in the past, then Zero is an easy fit for them because they're quite similar in the terms of ways that they are looking at it. QuickBooks approach is just different. It's just very much focused on the end consumer first and it is about trying to reinvent certain aspects of it that goes forward. And it's whatever you prefer and whatever is right for your business. You can trial them both for free, so have a go and see what you think. You should always check with your accountant what they recommend and why. And not necessarily because either platform is better than the other. In summary, pick zero or don't speak to me. Brilliant. Again, production value of the video, absolutely wonderful. I do still say that there are a few misconceptions there is probably the best um, option of it, but again, Jerry's at the very beginning has, has explained the fact that she is very much a zero fangirl and would be, you know, looking to find the parts that are very much zero focused. For me, I would have brought in the fact that reconciliation, you can reconcile on QuickBooks and you can't really reconcile on zero. Always been a bugbear of mine and for a lot of accountants out there as well. Um, but 
which is absolutely right. It depends on what of your versions. And in fact, on our QuickBooks versus Zero, we came to the exact conclusion. So, but if you look at our video between QuickBooks versus Zero, and you'll see our little battle we did where it was QuickBooks versus Zero itself and see which one was the winner, you will find at that point that there are definitely the same conclusions that have been made here. Both solutions are pretty much feature parity. There's some subtle difference between one and the other, but ultimately what's right for your business is what's right for your business. And even we will push people to zero if we think that that's the better one. And like Jerry says, in, in some circumstances, that should, might also include moving accountant firms as well. But there we are. QuickBooks versus Zero. Now, I need help from the community though, because I still am looking for QuickBooks versus Sage or even QuickBooks versus Zero versus Sage. Love to find some champions of Sage out there, um, which is proving really difficult if I'm honest. Um, but it would be great to find those people out there so that we can go and look and see what the differences between the two are. I used to be a Sage Line 50 baby that was my absolute best piece of software back in the day but clearly now i've switched allegiances and it wouldn't be fair me comparing sage versus quickbooks when i don't really know what's properly happening in the world of sage at this point in time but no great work by jerry as you can see her channel is growing as well so go over there give it a like give it a thumbs up all that sort of jazz and why not give my thumbs up and like as well while you are at it as you can see the argument between zero versus quickbooks is well and truly over now and quickbooks won so congratulations to the guys over at quickbooks winning the battle winning the war and being able to make the best software out there honest so make sure you are liked you are subscribed for the next video that we're going to do and again if you know anyone out there who is a sage champion drop us a call and we will make sure that we look at that solution as well my name has been Aaron patrick this has been an absolute pleasure to do for you and i will see you in the next video bye for now Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.